Hey guys, got a real brief update here on this Quincy QR325 80 gallon 5 horsepower vertical air compressor project I've been working on here for the last few weeks. Uh, last time you saw it fully functional and operational on its own, um, that part hasn't changed. The only thing I did do was I mentioned uh, I wanted to replace the pressure switch and possibly add an electronic tank drain. And uh, I've done both of those uh, items. Um, here is the new pressure switch. It's just a standard square D uh, pressure switch. It's got availability of going up to, uh, it's over 175, probably closer to 200. However, it's only set up for uh, 125 cut in and 160 cut out. So there's a 35 PSI uh, pressure differential. So I've got that hooked up and wired. That works good. And then um, I also have an electronic tank drain. Uh, both of these I got from the company I mentioned last time, uh, the company I went to on that Friday, and they were closed when they said they were going to be open. And uh, they called me back the following Monday, and they were very apologetic about what had happened. And uh, they basically said that, you know, if they if I wanted, they would uh, send out a pressure switch um, at a reduced cost, and then uh, I wouldn't also pay for it. I just uh, basically just pay for the pressure switch, or if I came in, uh, they would make it worth my while as well. So I opted to drive back there, and um, like I said, they felt uh, very apologetic about what had happened. So they cut me a deal on the pressure switch, and then uh, they also cut me a deal on this uh, electronic tank drain. So uh, the tank drain and pressure switch, um, the original retail cost should have been well over $150, um, what they normally sell it for, and I got them both for $130, so um, I couldn't complain. So uh, the only thing that I, uh, I guess I didn't get from the tank drain, uh, originally I had mentioned that I wanted the tank drain to be uh, a 220 volt version so I could tie it into the bottom side of the contactor with the two legs of the tank drain. Uh, however, this version is only a 110 volt model. And uh, so now my idea of tying both legs into the bottom side of the contactor is not going to work. I'm only going to be able to tie one. Um, little did I realize it'll still work to my benefit partially. Um, because this compressor pulls a higher amperage when I'm currently running, I need to pull a heavier gauge wire from the disconnect switch back to the circuit breaker box. And in doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull two of the wires out, but I'm going to leave one of the wires there, and I'm going to turn that into a neutral circuit. So I'm going to tie the one end into the neutral bar into the circuit breaker box, and the other end into the neutral bar of the disconnect switch by the compressor. Therefore, I will have a uh, neutral leg to go back to for the neutral side of this um, electronic tank drain and I'll still be able to take uh, one of the legs from this for the uh, one hot leg of the uh, electronic tank drain. Now you might be wondering why am I going through all this work of uh, tying into the contactor why not just plug it into a standard wall outlet? Well the way these electronic tank drains work are um, if I can zoom in here, there's two dials there, and one dial is basically set up for uh, purge time, and the other dial is set up for cycle time or frequency. Purge time is, uh, has available setting of a half a second up to 10 seconds, and cycle time is available from every 30 seconds up to every 45, se 45 minutes. So what that means is, is this, as long as this electronic tank drain is plugged in, it'll continue to cycle around the clock, even when the compressor's not running. So the idea of tying it into the bottom side of the contactor is the timer will only have electricity when the uh, compressor is running. Therefore, it'll eliminate the need of the uh, compressor cycling um, because the tank drain keeps opening. So... Um, Another thing is, too, is this compressor is in a remote location. Um, it's in the same building as the shop here, but it's in a different part. So, uh, therefore, to go in and plug it every night at the, at the end of the night or the end of the day or whichever, it's a real pain. So here, if I tie it to the bottom of the contactor, it'll never um, purge or cycle unless the compressor is running. And I've got the capability here of turning the compressor off at the circuit breaker on my side of the shop here. So um, I can turn them both off with the flip of one switch. So... 
Um, I could have gone with a pneumatic version, but the guys at the compressor shop weren't really sure if it would work or not because the way the pneumatic versions work, uh, they rely off of the excess head pressure uh, from the compressor when the compressor starts and stops. And uh, basically with the Quincy's, uh, the 325 and the 340's and the 350's and all that, there is no um, uh, check valve in the tank here. So from here on up, all the way up to the top side of the compressor here, this has all filled with air pressure yet. Compared to a lot of your other models, your Champions, um, I think even some of the entry level Quincy's, there is a check valve down here. The only thing holding this air pressure back is a high pressure discharge valve. So the only head pressure in this compressor when it shuts down is basically on the, on the top of the head on the low and high pressure side. That's it. So what happens uh, for a pneumatic tank drain to work is when this... Um, bleeds off the excess pressure that would actually go into a tube to a little diaphragm valve which then would open up a small um, valve of some sort and bleed off the condensate so essentially you're using head pressure to, to uh, run a, a condensate drain and uh, with the Quincy there's not a whole lot of head pressures to my understanding so rather than uh, trying to make it work I just opted not to plus it was actually twice as much as this electric version so um, I just couldn't complain. So, anyways, that's the update for now. Uh, probably the last video and update will be this compressor installed in its location and uh, fully functional and, uh, and running. So, I will keep you posted. Thanks for watching.